Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. Barbara Green joining us here again live today on the podcast and Zoomcast, our orofacial myofunctional therapist at tonguethrust.com. Go to the website there. Again, that's tonguethrust.com. Exciting to have her back here to, of course, enlighten us more on, uh, well, a long career she's had. And by the way, she's been changing so many people's lives for the better. How are you today? I am very well, thank you. Great. Well, tell us a little bit about what it is you do. Just introduce yourself to start. Thank you. Okay. Well, myofunctional therapy is a program of exercises that retrains the muscles of the mouth and face and allows people to get rid of what we call a tongue thrust yep. problem or mouth breathing and uh, all sorts of things. Today, we're going to talk about tongue tie or lingual freedom issues. Okay. And so if we could share our screen, we can get started with that. Beautiful. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, where is my, I don't have any share screen button. Oh, you should have right on the bottom. It's, it should say participants, chat, react, share. You always share your screen. You do it so well. So there we go. Got it. All right. Perfect. Seeing is believing and the past few months with Barbara. Oh, here we go again. What is this? There we go. So that is me. Hey. Uh, gee, I look the same. How nice. You do. Exactly. <laughs> See, a lot of people use old pictures. You know, it means you're just not aging. That's great. <laughs> yeah. In fact, this is a pretty new one. I uh, just recently took that. Yeah. So it, this is how to contact me. And this is my website and my email, Barbara at tonguethrust.com. And I am in Ventura, California, but I see patients virtually. Right. My phone number is 805-452-4302. So today we're going to talk about lingual freedom issues or tongue tie, or it's also called enclaglossia. Now, what the heck is that? Well, oh. all it is, is a piece of tissue, if you can see my arrow, that connects the tongue to the floor of the mouth or connects the lips to the gum tissue. Okay. So without that little muscle, our tongue would be much too free. <laughs> but when people have a too tight muscle like mm -hmm. this, then the tongue cannot reach the top of the mouth. Ooh. So our tongue is supposed to sit in the top of our mouth. And when it cannot, it, it then has to rest in the bottom of our mouth okay. or slightly in the middle. Okay. But depending on how tight this tongue attachment is here, ah. it you see how when they're trying to lift their tongue, it forms a heart shape. Mm -hmm. And that is not supposed to happen. And then if you look behind the tongue, mm. right behind where the tip of the tongue would be, the middle of the tongue is actually being pulled down. And so the whole tongue is unable to function correctly. Mm -hmm. but this picture, this is how a tongue should look. So if I ask you to lift up your tongue and touch the top of your mouth, yeah. this is what it should look like. Wow. It should be totally free and nice and pointed and able to touch the top of your mouth with your mouth open about that wide. So it's, it's so important that that is happening. Now, there's also a labial frenum, which is the lip frenum. And so there's a, a piece of muscle that comes from your lip and attaches to the tissue of the gums. But this frenum is too long. And now it's coming all the way down into between the teeth. And notice how the teeth are being separated. Oh, okay. So here's one that's even worse. So the tie is very wide. And these are very strong. They're holding your lip in place. But when they're incorrect and they're big like this, notice how this person's teeth are totally separated. And they'll be that way forever unless we go to a surgeon and they release that muscle and make it smaller and less tight. Wow. So where does it begin? It can begin 
all the way back to when you were a tiny baby. And this baby was having a lot of trouble nursing. It, she couldn't latch onto the mother's breast. And wow. when she would go to suck, the tongue was not allowing her to function properly. Wow. So if you look at her tongue, remember I said how the middle of the yeah. tongue is being pulled down mm -hmm. and see how the sides of her tongue are flaring up. And this is the problem that her frenum here is too tight. And so it needs to be released because this is one day later after it was released. Now look at the back of the tongue is functioning correctly for nursing and lifting up to the top of the mouth. Mm -hmm. And the tongue is protecting the breast from the ridge of the mandibular ridge. And look at the tongue here. It can easily go right up to the top of the mouth. So it's, it's pretty obvious that this could cause a problem, whereas this can be endless days of happy nursing. So it's a very important mm -hmm. process for a baby. It's so simple for them to release this muscle. Okay. Now, in some babies, it does grow back when they're a little bit yeah. older, but then it still can be treated. Most of the time, it does not but occasionally it does. But this is the important time okay. when they have to be nursing. So then here is a lingual frenum before surgery. So you can see how tight this one is and see that dip in the back and middle of the tongue. Okay. And, and when they try to point their tongue, again, they form that heart shape. And this is right after the surgery. So what they do is trim that muscle back. Now, they're not getting rid of the frenum. The frenum is still there inside the tissue. It's just that this frenum is too mm -hmm. much. It's just too much. I and see. Tight. So they open it up and they remove the excess tissue, which then gets back to the real frenum. And now that will heal together. Wow. And already right after surgery they can point their tongue without wow. that restriction wow it's it's it helps you to understand what they do it, i've had it done i know mm -hmm. what it's like and it, you are sore for a, the first day i had some pain okay some don't have any pain mm -hmm. and second third and fourth and fifth day it was just a matter it wasn't sore yeah but every day it got better now, these are some of the difficulties we see with, mm -hmm. with tight frenums. Normally, a tongue rests in the palate across the top of the mouth. Okay. But when you have frenum difficulties, it holds the tongue either in the floor or very slightly above the floor of the mouth. So when swallowing, the tongue should push against the top of the mouth and endorphins are released. Yeah. Are our feel good, uh, little good things. They are the endorphins are things that make us feel good. But when they're in the down position, they're not being released. So a lot of times people have emotional issues and things going on. The back of the tongue is a very important part of the tongue, forming a seal against the throat during a swallow. Now it can't stay there because then you couldn't breathe. Yeah. But during a swallow, it pushes against the throat and then comes back forward. Okay. But when you have a tight frenum, that it can't do that. So there's not a function properly. And we end up swallowing air, which causes gastric issues. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yes. So the anterior and lateral borders of the tongue spread and apply pressure against the teeth or between the teeth causing an open bite and or periodontal disease or gum disease. And orthodontics would be unsuccessful. Okay. A lot of orthodontists put on braces without correcting the tongue thrust or their mouth breathing mm -hmm. of that. And guess what? Then the braces fail. Mm. Put on braces again. I have a man ah. who has had orthodontics six times and now he's back in Invisalign. So this is his wow. second time. And he still has a problem. 
So without a tongue seal against the palate, air swallowing occurs. And yeah. so a lot of my patients have gas and burping and hiccups and stomach uh, or GERD. Yep. So speech that. are often negatively affected when there's a tongue thrust. So here's an anterior frenum. And so you can see how really serious this one is. And here they are going in with a laser and they're opening up that frenum. And so now here the frenum is gone and now this will just heal together. So here's a before surgery and after surgery. Okay. You can see the major difference in how these two tongues yeah. are. So it's, um, this is one of my patients right now who I can't even believe this case. He's 17 and no one, and his parents have taken him to the dentist every six months of his life, as soon as he had teeth. And they have been very uh, proactive about treating him, but no one, no one in 60, at 17 years of going to the dentist, look at this tongue tie. He has to take four fingers to lift up his tongue. So this is a very, very serious tongue tie. And this is his normal tongue position. Yeah. So everything is totally down. He cannot mm. lift his tongue. He, he, and, you know, this is it. That's his okay. tongue. Lift his tongue. And look at his bite. There's no teeth meeting except a little tiny bit back here. And that's even not in the right position. So this poor guy is going to be this way the rest of his life without having surgery, which was already done. And now we're having a very difficult time, but he's working really hard. And his tongue is starting to respond by better control and better placement. But it takes a long time to retrain this tongue because his whole programming is down. There's, there's no programming in his brain for his tongue to function correctly. So he has trouble eating. Uh, usually their speech is terribly affected. He happens to have fairly good speech. I don't know how he does it, but otherwise everything else is, is incorrect. So here's a person with a labial frenum. And so this is called a lip tie also. And again, remember we said when that tissue is very long and down into the tissue, the uh, area of their teeth, it separates their teeth. But also what we have to be concerned about is this short upper lip. So you see how her lower lip is getting really fat looking because she has to overwork just to close her lips. Her, her upper lip can't close down to her lower lip. So she's developing a, a flat face and that short upper lip is, is not attractive. So we had to have surgery done on this. And then now we're, we will be doing myofunctional therapy for her. So these are just some examples of labial frenums. This is before surgery and this is after surgery. They have been able mm -hmm. to close. This is before surgery. There's not an after okay. picture. But here's a strange one on the lower lip. They actually have two lip ties. And I have one recently that had three. There was one in the center and two on each side. I mean, one on each side. And so we have to remove, we have to trim back all of the frenum so that this okay. can be correct. Yeah. And notice how um, the gum tissue yeah. is here. And so they'll end up having to have okay. gut surgery and might end up losing their teeth. Wow. And then they would have to have implants put in. Oh, my gosh. But if you don't address this issue, then it can even uh, make it so that the implants do not last. So it's uh, we showed this case with our last topic of how to sleep correctly. Mm-hmm. And this young man has a very serious tongue tie. 
and he had speech issues. Mm -hmm. And so this picture is after he had surgery done. And we retrained his tongue to work correctly. So this is before and after and before and after with his teeth, which we were very excited about because we didn't know whether or not his open Mm -hmm. mouth would close once his tongue was no longer pushing against Okay. And so um, it it doesn't mean that he'll never need orthodontics. It could mean that, but it might not mean that. But what it means is that he is not going to have problems all the rest of his life yeah. with bite, with his with gum disease, with neck tension and, and oh yeah, headaches, with jaw problems and yeah. facial, facial pain. So many of my patients have all of those things. Mm-hmm. For some patients, the moment that this tongue tie is released, they feel all of that yeah. tension go away in their neck and their jaw and their facial muscles. And so it's it, that's very exciting to somebody with TMJ issues yeah. to have that happen. But just releasing this, we, we have a new problem now Uh-oh. because people are dying from sleep apnea. <gasps> Doctors are looking at oh. and they're recommending surgery. Mm-hmm. But they're not recommending myofunctional therapy to retrain the muscles. Interesting. So a new problem. Okay. So now, now the tongue is released, but they don't know how to use it correctly. Hmm. And so they don't stop their mouth breathing and they don't retrain their tongue to the top of their mouth. And actually their sleep apnea can get worse because now the tongue just falls back hmm. against the throat even more. So it's so important if someone is recommending to you to have tongue tie, that tongue tie release, Mm -hmm. you really need to find a myofunctional therapist so they can teach you. Okay. It's, it's, it does take work. They do have to do exercises twice a day and they need to see me once a week, but it's only for about a four to five month period of their whole life. And then everything is working correctly. And we teach them how to eat and drink correctly. We teach them how to sleep correctly with their tongue in the right position and their mouth closed. We get rid of mouth breathing and teach nasal breathing. We work on their head, neck, body posture. And we work on all of the things that involve their um poor posture. So uh, we have a new problem with all the digital things with posture, because everybody's got their head down all the time, working on their cell phone, or on their laptop or computer, with their head forward and their body forward. So it's, it's a huge issue. And it just means that they need to just pay attention for a, a short period in their life to retraining their muscles, but then everything else is so much better. Wow. Like, oh boy, his life is completely different now because it took away a lot of his behavioral issues and his ability to focus and concentrate and his ability to do homework. I mean, just that one little thing yeah. can help a person a lot so it's um definitely worth uh they're getting into the whole therapy program to help them to learn how to use everything correctly and to get rid of those tight muscles so there you are wow (laughs) wow Finish in record time. Wow. We still have more, plenty more time to talk. We have five minutes left, but wow, that was great. Um, go, Do you go have any questions like uh, that a person might want to ask me and have an answer to? Well, you know, first and foremost, the fact that you always mention that, you know, a lot of people go to the orthodontist. 
Mm -hmm. They get their teeth fixed. And guess what? They're not staying in the right position, no matter how many times you do braces, because clearly there's an underlying issue here. And how come our doctors don't and dentists don't tell us about this? Well, what's sad is that it's not being taught in orthodontic school, in dental school, in medical school. Now, because of sleep apnea, uh, some doctors are very much looking for more answers. And so then they find myofunctional therapy. In fact, I was at a meeting Wednesday night and uh, got talking to a periodontist. And, you know, we were talking about their generality of training. And he said, I knew nothing about myofunctional therapy. And he said, but I was frustrated because a lot of the things that I was doing that I knew I was doing right, Right. Ah, you know, it wasn't working with the patient. Mm-hmm. Guess what? He has three myofunctional therapists in oh his my gosh. in his office. So now he's a total believer in myofunctional therapy. And um, you know, it's just I I find it all the time that like the orthodontist that is my main referral source now, almost probably three quarters of my patients come from him. And three years ago, he didn't even know what myofunctional therapy was. <laughs> so we went out to lunch one day and I, I, you know, I said to him, I showed him pictures and we talked about it. And he said, well, um, okay. And, but he only sent me his orthodontic relapse cases. Oh. So these are his failed cases. So one day we went out to lunch again and I said to him, wouldn't you rather prevent the orthodontic relapse? And he said, well, of course. And I said, well, then this is what you need to do. So now he sends patients before he'll even put on a brace or, you know, he takes records, but he says, you need myofunctional therapy first. So now I am on his list mm-hmm. of people that he knows can help him. And any orthodontist, if I were an orthodontist, I would have a full-time myofunctional therapist or one or two or three because almost every patient needs it. Yeah. So if you can provide that service, it's an, an additional income source, which they all love. And it is a way to help them. And I mean, think about it. If you're doing myofunctional therapy with braces, Mm -hmm. it speeds up the time of tooth movement. Then instead of it taking two years, it only takes a year or a year and a half. You can be seeing other patients. So it is an income source just by the fact that you refer for myofunctional therapy because it makes their therapy, their orthodontic treatment go faster. And so that's, that's a wise decision on their part. <laughs> Beautiful. So, yeah. And that, I mean, that's true of perio, uh, periodontics. It's true of even a person putting in crown and bridge work. Yeah. So many times the crown and bridge work, the people come in and they say, it doesn't work. It doesn't fit. It isn't right. Well, we do the myofunctional therapy. And all of a sudden the bridge is right. It's okay. It, it, it's because of the tongue pushing against the crown or the bridge work that's causing the problem. Mm-hmm. So it feels comfortable. Like one day it feels like this is wrong or the next day yeah. oh, now it's this wrong, you know, and they're constantly going back in for adjustments and the dentist should have, of course, referred them before he did the bridge. But at least if they refer so that we can retrain those muscles, then their dentistry is functioning at a much higher level. And hopefully they did do the bridge right. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Well, this is great. Well, thank you so much. Uh, And Barbara Green, you're always so informative, so well versed. Uh, Want people to know that, um, you know, if there's, you know, I know you you do this work virtually, right? Uh, And you're based out of Ventura, California. But and, you know, if someone wants to meet with you, um, how do we start the process? Well, 
uh, uh, they can email me and tell me, like I received two this week from dentists and they they tell me about the case that is a problem for them. And one is actually not a, their dentist, it's a, um, a, a friend of theirs who has had Bell's palsy. Yep. And, but the face has not completely uh, come back to normal. So sometimes I can help, sometimes I can't help. You know, it, I'm not, I'm a miracle worker, but mm-hmm. I'm not a pure miracle worker. <laughs> but I have created many miracles by just calming down the musculature and allowing things to function without stress. So that's the key is the stress that we're making our bodies work under when things don't work right. So I did this for myself. I was my first patient. Uh Yes, I went away to learn this work for a patient and sat there realizing, and I was in TMJ pain, terrible TMJ pain at the time, and realized, oh my God, I have this problem. So my first patient and I did the exercises together, literally. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I found out that it works because it worked for me and it worked for her as well. And she was an orthodontic patient that was having major problems. So it's uh, it's been a roller coaster ride of um, of success as well as being concerned about the state that a lot of people are in that in this day and age, everything should actually be better. But instead, I'm getting so many patients with major problems. You know, they've got a lot of disease problems. They've got a lot of emotional problems and just. Ah. <laughs> Great. Well, just a challenge. Oh, thank you so much. Barbara Green, how do we contact you one more time? 805-452. Four three zero two or my website. So thank you. you thank can... you. Always a pleasure having you here. All right, Jill. Have, have a good week. You too, sweetheart. Enjoy your day. Bye bye. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.